Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Wayne Estes Center on the Utah State campus. My name is Doug Hoffman, Associate Media Relations Director here at Utah State. Uh, at the conclusion of the press conference today, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, so if you have a question, just raise your hand. We have a wireless mic that we'll bring around and give you just so that we can have good audio for the stream and, and everybody can hear your questions. Before I turn the time over to Mr. Hartwell and Coach Odom, I just wanted to give everybody a quick uh, perspective on how good Aggie basketball has been over the years. Historically, Utah State has played in 22 NCAA tournaments and has won 1,657 career games. Both of those achievements rank in the top 50 in the country all time. It's also first in the Mountain West. Even more impressive is the success this program has had since the turn of the century. Since the 1999-2000 season, Utah State has 11 NCAA tournament bids and 16 21 seasons. There's only 17 teams in the country that can say that, and Utah State is one of those 17. Furthermore, Utah State has won eight regular season conference championships and eight more tournament championships since the turn of the century. With all of that, who better to lead this program moving forward than the only coach that's led a 16 seed over a one seed in the NCAA tournament? At this time, let me introduce uh, Utah State University Vice President and Director of Athletics, John Hartwell. Thank you, Doug, and, and thank you all for being here today. Uh, an exciting day for Utah State athletics, Utah State basketball in particular, and for all of Cache Valley. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't start out, though, uh, saying thank you to, to the young men over here, to the uh, student athletes of our men's basketball team. Great year. I know the last 10 days has, has been uh, anxiety filled or, or until about two days ago. And, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you what fine young men these are. They are not only great basketball players, but they're great representatives and ambassadors of our university. And, and thanks, guys. And you know what? Why today is so exciting is the tradition and the winning ways that you guys have built we're getting ready to take that to the next level. So I, I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, I'll save you guys a couple of these questions because I know they would come at the end. Uh, what has transpired since uh, about 10 o'clock uh, a week ago last Friday when I get the call that says, that tips me off says, hey, we're gonna have a search. So I knew that it was gonna be a challenge for these guys. I, I told them when, when I met with them uh, a week ago Saturday morning, I know that anxiety. Between my sophomore and junior years in college, I had a coaching change. And it, you know, and, and that was no COVID involved. So these guys have been in a bubble for so long. It's been a grind, uh, you know, a, an unbelievable season. Uh, but so many factors that they couldn't control and then all of a sudden you have a coaching change. So it, it's been tough. And again, my, my hat's off to these guys. So my, my biggest thing was how quickly could we act in getting this thing done, but it was not for the sake of checking a box and saying that we hired a coach. We were gonna act quickly, but we were gonna make sure that we had the right person to lead Utah State men's basketball going forward. And so, uh, much to my chagrin, part of, uh, part of Monday morning, I uh, forsook the whole, that's not a right word, my wife would be really upset. I, I brushed off going the, uh, the search firm route. I just said, hey, we, we've got to cut through the red tape here. We, we've got to get this thing going and get it done as quickly as possible. So it, it was pretty much uh, lone wolf. We had unbelievable interest, as you, uh, you know, can, can only imagine. Uh, very successful head coaches, 
assistant coaches, folks in the NBA. And again, that's a tribute to this university, to this athletics department, and, and to these young men here on the, on the tradition that Utah State athletics and Utah State basketball in particular have built. And oh, by the way, there's a lot of people out there that want to get on the bandwagon of qualifying for three straight NCAA tournaments. So I literally uh, left last Wednesday, was on the road until yesterday, all over the country. And again, unbelievable interest, but very clearly the guy who distinguished himself as the right guy to lead Utah State basketball going forward and not only maintain our levels of success, but to expand our levels of success. And as Ryan talked to our team just a little bit ago, it's, it's not about getting to the NCAA tournament, it's to winning games in the NCAA tournament. This guy has done it before, he knows how to do it. He inherits a, a program that's not a rebuild as he talked about uh, when he took over the University of Maryland Baltimore County program, they had lost 20 games the last 20 games each year the last seven years. So there it was about flipping a culture. Here he's going to further elevate this culture. I am so excited to introduce to you all Coach Ryan Odom, Utah State Aggies. Wow, what a what a day! Um, I'm so I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I'm so blessed to be here. Thankful uh, for this amazing opportunity and responsibility, because that's really what it is—a tremendous responsibility uh, to lead this Aggie program, this storied program. Uh, you, know, you just heard all of the accolades and and you know the the tradition here that exists uh, in this in this basketball program. And it's all a credit to those that have come, obviously the current team, Coach Smith and his staff, uh, you know, obviously that have moved on, previous coaches, anyone that has either worn the Aggie uniform or been a coach at this fine institution, all right, has so much to be proud of. And I'm blessed to be the guy standing here now because it is a, we are in a very competitive business. Um, there are a ton of great coaches out there. And I come to you from a place of gratitude right now. That's the one word that I want to use, and, I'm gonna, and you'll see kind of where I'm going with this. Uh, gratitude is extremely important to me. Um, I'm thankful uh, to John, all right, to Dr. Cockett uh, for the confidence in me to lead this program uh, going forward. All right, and, and I think we'll talk more about, all right, about whoop, the lights. We shot the lights out. Here we go. We'll keep we'll keep rolling here with it. Um, I want to I want to talk about a little bit about gratitude and and why Ryan Odom is standing before you right right now. Uh, anyone in life that has any type of success uh, never does it on their own. I'm certainly no different than that. Uh, I'm grateful for this opportunity, like I said before, but I would not be standing here if it wasn't for Neil McGahee uh, at Lenore Ryan, who hired me, much like John has right here, to lead their program in Division II. Uh, when I first took that program over, uh, they had fallen on hard times. They had, had great tradition overall, but had fallen on hard times in that recent, recent history. And he showed great confidence in me at a tough time in my life, in our family's life. And uh, it gave me new life in basketball. It rejuvenated my life in basketball and reminded me why I coached this game. I inherited a group of kids there at Lenore Ryan that were amazing, still close with, with all of them. Had a, had a tremendous year there, went to the Sweet 16 uh, in the NCAA tournament in Division II and uh, was blessed to coach those guys. And that, that uh, venture led, or that adventure led me to UMBC, where Tim Hall, who still is going to be one of the best, my best friends ever, uh, hired me to lead UMBC, and and Dr. Rabowski, who is our president, who will be a mentor for life for me. I'm standing here because of them and their confidence 
all right, in me. And so I know where I came from. Uh, to all the former players, you know, that I've been fortunate enough to coach over the years, uh, both as an assistant coach, all right, and certainly as during my time as head coach of, of Lenore Ryan and, and, uh, and UMBC, I would not be standing here before you if it was not for them and their successes, uh, and so many of them. I can't, I can't name them all. The relationships will exist forever. To all the coaches that I've worked for over the years, I've been assistant coach uh, for numerous guys that have done great things. I'm not going to sit here and rattle off all the coaches that I've worked for. You, you certainly can can look that up, but they all mean something to me, all right? They're all dear to my heart. I learned something different from each one of them. I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for them. All the assistant coaches that I worked with who pushed me, all right? And we worked together to achieve a common goal and do what was best for our head coach and the program in general. All right, I'm thankful to you. The last two are the hardest. My parents, my brother, I'm very fortunate to have a family that cares about me, that has pushed me, that has helped me grow as a person, as a man, and I'm thankful for them. Uh, obviously, it's no secret, we're moving west, baby. We're out here. We're excited about it. All right, my parents, all right, dad's going to have to get used to, you know, Midnight games at home. He's going to have to stay up a little later than he's, than he's used to to watch it. And that's okay. All right, that's what families do. He'll be coaching these guys, you know, from the sidelines in his living room without a doubt. My brother, who's a scout for the Jazz, all right, lives in South Carolina. He was ecstatic when I told him that I was offered the job. And he said, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. you got to go do it. You're going to do great. And then lastly, Lucia. And my two boys. Um, one little story that about about Lucia and and myself. Um, you know, it's all it's kind of come full circle for us. It's come full circle for us, and she'll know where I'm going with this. And I haven't even told John this. Um, I didn't want that to necessarily be a part of the interview process. Cause it's not it's not that it's totally relevant to to hire me or anything, but. Um, we came out here 21 years ago, and we were going on a trip, and Lucia just thought it was just a trip. You know, we were going to vacation somewhere. We weren't married at the time, and we just wanted to go, you know, go out west and spend some time. And for whatever reason, we chose this area. And, uh, and one of these mountains right around here, all right, I got my number one recruit. I, I asked her to marry me right here in, in Utah. And so we've been on this journey together, and I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for her as well and her willingness to go on this journey with me. And so I appreciate you. I love you. And uh, my two boys as well. These guys, they'll be, you know, Connor's getting to where he's the same age as all these guys, but Owen's going to be in eighth grade, or excuse me, in ninth grade when we get here. And uh, I, I can already tell you, after meeting with these guys just a second ago in our office, offices upstairs, all right, these two guys have some great big brothers right here, all right, without a doubt, a lot to be proud of, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to you guys being a part of their lives, all right, and helping them grow as well, uh, because that's what being in a basketball family is all about, all right, you don't know it, all right, but little kids look up to you guys constantly, and I know that it's like that here, all right, at Utah State. So that's, that's the gratitude part about it, all right? Why Utah State, all right, for me? All right, I think a lot of it's already been said, the tradition, all right? The leadership, all right? It's one of the best ADs in the country, all right, right here that I'm standing beside and lucky to partner with, all right, to try to help Utah State achieve its dreams in advancing in the NCAA tournament. The coaches and players, the history and, uh, of the coaches and players just walking all right, right here in the Estes Center, you see it. It's right there on full display. Walking in the Spectrum Center, walking down that tunnel, all right, and experiencing and imagining in my head, all right, the herd and the crowd and, and just the home court advantage that we have here. 
Right? It's not like that everywhere. That's why I'm here. It's not like that everywhere. I'm excited to be a part of it. Those players, all right, right there. All right, I know we've got a few that aren't able to, weren't able to make it. That's one of the reasons that I'm here. All right, I told them in our first Zoom, all right, you didn't choose me, I chose you. Now it's my job to earn their trust. All right, it's my job to be there for them. It's my job to mentor them, all right, during college, all right, during their time with me. All right, and our staff here at Utah State. It's my job to push them. It's my job to hold them accountable. It's my job to get them to do things that they didn't know that they could do. All right, that's the job of a coach, all right, or a teacher. That's my job to prepare them for life after basketball. That's why I got into coaching. It will be no different here, all right, at Utah State. Change of scenery, all right, same all right, ideas, all right, same values, same culture. My job is, is to not do it exactly the way it's been done here before. I have to do it my way, all right, but at the same time, all right, we, uh, we do it together, all right, and I think that's, that's what has existed here and is so exciting for me to be a part of, all right, the collective chase of excellence. And that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to max these guys out in three simple areas. From an academic perspective, we want to make sure that they're achieving their goals and doing their best in the classroom, all right, on track for graduation and beyond, all right, and that includes masters, all right, at UMBC, we have three guys going for a masters, all right, that just, that are going to graduate in May, all right. That's going to happen here as well, all right, due to COVID, all right, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. The air will come out of that ball at some point. Then what? We want to make sure that we're preparing them for that then what. The fans and the donors, I told you, that's another reason that I'm here. All right. The, uh, the passion, all right, that is here and that exists here, the Aggie pride, all right, that exists here, that excites me. I want to be a part of it. It's an opportunity to build upon a winning culture. All right, this is, this is a little bit different for me. All right, I've been in situations where a little bit more rebuild situations. That's not what this is. John mentioned that a second ago. All right, this is one where, all right, we know where we're at. Where do we want to go? Well, where do we want to go? We want to be a top 25 team year in and year out. We want to advance in the NCAA tournament. We have the support here in order to do that. It's on us to get it done. All right, and that's, that's what we'll work towards every day. All right, we'll fall short, all right, at times. That's okay. That's how you get where you want to go. The team that beat Virginia lost by 40, all right, earlier in the year, all right, to an Albany team. That was a hard day. Lost by 40. Come back, beat a, beat a one seed. The ups and downs of, of college basketball are there. All right, how you respond to that adversity, all right, is everything. And that's my job as a coach. All right, my job as a coach is to be present with them every single day, to come in with maximum energy every single day, to be there for these guys, all right, and to help them grow as people. So we're going to chase excellence here. We're going to play a style of basketball that's efficient. All right, the best, the best uh, programs in college basketball are efficient on both sides of the ball. All right, they're stingy on defense. They make it really tough to score around the rim. All right, they don't just give up tons of three-point shots because we know that's a big part of our game right now. All right, they're very hard to score on. They don't foul a lot. All right, that's one of our, our traits as a team. All right, we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're getting our guys to that point. Offensively, the open guy is the go-to guy a lot of times. That doesn't mean that we're not, we don't have to go at matchups and all of that, and there are certain places where we, we definitely need to do that within each game. All right, we, we will go at matchups, all right, but at the same time, we'll play a fast style of basketball where we'll enter offense quickly, multiple handlers, all right, guys that can dribble, pass, and shoot, all right. I think my style of coaching fits what the roster is set for right now. Obviously, we have to fill, all right, spots that exist in terms of scholarships, and we'll dive into that as we begin to move forward. 
All right, that's a conversation for another time. But, you know, the reality is we want to be the most efficient team, all right, in the Mountain West on both sides of the ball. If you're balanced on both sides, all right, you've got a chance to advance in the NCAA tournament, all right, because when that, that night comes where your offense isn't going, all right, your defense gets you through, all right, and that's, that's certainly a, a trait, you know, of our teams. Uh, this may sound a little bit corny, but one, one of the other things that I want to get accomplished is, is make some lasting memories, all right, with these guys. That's what being in college is all about, having fun with your teammates, all right? And after talking to them earlier, all right, this is a connected group, all right? Coach Smith and his, his staff have, have recruited a, a group here that's very connected to one another, and that excites me. That's that's a big reason why you're able to win. Those that are not connected don't win. All right, those that are not a unit do not win. And so we've got to build upon that. We've got to continue to cultivate that and do our best to play for one another, all right, going forward. And that's, that's a huge thing, playing for one another. We want to graduate our players and prepare them for life, all right, without a doubt. That's, that's, the, that's the goal all right, here, all right, as a coach. And I'm excited to get going. I'm excited to, to be here at Utah State. I'm blessed to be here. I'm looking forward to the challenge. I'm looking forward to the responsibility and uh, getting in the gym with these guys because that's what it's all about, you know, having fun in the gym and, and moving this thing forward. Um, I'm happy to take any questions here. Uh, go Aggies. Coach, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Al Lewis from KBNU Radio here in Logan. Um, you just talked about getting this job. Coaches nowadays are so connected that on the internet they can get film and video real fast. Have you looked at Utah State from last year already and made some thoughts or have some thoughts about the team from last year and what the, how they yeah, play? Yeah, I've done this twice now in terms of taking over a new program. And, you know, one of the biggest things that, that you know, I'll try to do is get in the gym with them live, all right, and begin to learn their games and learn. I'm not going to come in here with any preconceived notions about this player is, is just like this or he should be this guy or he should be that guy, all right. That all plays out, all right, as we, as we get in the gym together. And so obviously I've seen these guys play. I know the types of players that they are generally, all right, but at the same time, uh, it's not about that. All right, it's about getting in here together, all right, working, all right, and letting them showcase what they can do, all right, and, and you know, you, it's, you can't coach someone else's team, right, and so my job is to get in here and coach these guys from day one. Hey, Coach, Jacob Nielsen, Utah Statesman. You talked a little bit about kind of your game plan on the floor. How big of a role is analytics and like Ken Palm and stuff going to play? Uh, for you and your coaching staff? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, I had a, a guy on my staff that was an analytics position. Um, you know, it's coming. You're going to end up with, with video uh, at half times. We've actually done that at times, but you're going to have some of the NBA things are coming into our game, or you're going to have tablets on the bench, you know, where you're able to, it's, it is here, all right? And we're not, we're not getting away from it. How you use it is extremely important. All right, and we use it every year with our team. All right, when I talk about being one of the most balanced teams in the country, all right, it goes back to those you know four factors that are so important you know in a game, and uh, you know do you get to the free throw line? And it's one thing that I haven't talked about, but we want to score at the rim, we want to make threes, we want to get to the free throw line, all right, on offense. You want to do the reverse of that on the other end. All right, you want to limit how much you foul. You don't want to get torched from three, and you don't want to let people get layups on you. All right, and if you do a really good job of those three things, you're going to be a balanced team. You're going to be in every game. All right, so every day that we come in here, all right, can we make shots? Can we drive to the basket and make plays? Can we get fouled? All right, to put pressure on the opponent. So absolutely, we're going to use it. Uh, a lot of what I do with it is a little bit more on feel than it is. I'm not just going to totally sell out to the numbers, all right? But the numbers tell you tell you a lot of the story, and so we've got to make sure that we're mindful of that.
we always hear from coaches that it's really tough to schedule teams to come play us here. Have you got good connections and already thinking about scheduling teams that will come here on a one and one or two and one or whatever you do? And are you, are you willing to schedule those tough teams that might be a win or a loss, but get us better? So Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the non-conference is all about preparing you for your tough conference. And clearly you look up here, we've got a really, it's one of the best conferences in the country. I mean, year in and year out. I mean, it's, 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 it's average probably seven, eight, nine, ten, right in there, all right, over a whatever, however many years, you know, it's been in existence. Um, and so in order to prepare yourself for your conference and then beyond your conference in the NCAA tournament, you've got to use your non-conference to, to figure out where do we need to get a little bit better. And if you're, if you're not challenging yourself, all right, you're not going to you're not going to be able to achieve that. All right, you, some things, you know, some some holes may be there, and you may not realize it, you know, because of the competition that you played. And so we're going to make sure that we're scheduling for the NCAA tournament, all right, here at Utah State. And the only way you do that is to play really good competition. I'm just a little curious. I've never. I don't know how this all goes down or anything, but did did we find you or did you find us? And what was the? I'm That's sure you a got a good question. I'm sure you got That's a good question. Recruited yeah. by other people, but what brought you to USU? Yeah, I mean, I think I think I I covered a little bit of that in 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 uh, in my statement initially, but you know, obviously, I've had opportunities to go other places from UMBC, um, and they never were the right fit. Uh, for me and my family, this is the right fit. I mean, this is a this is a basketball program. All right, this is one that people care about what's going on here. All right, this is this is one. This can be one of the best programs in the country, and so that excites me. Um, you know, how does this this stuff kind of work? Obviously, John, all right, uh, is familiar with me. Um, you know, and and there was a connection there. I think what I would say is, you know, when we did come together. All right, the first time that we met, I think we both felt like, okay, we fit one another. And that's not always the case. And you have to kind of, you have, kind of have to work through that, um, you know, in that process. And like John said, these things are tough. These things are tough. These guys just went through it. Their coach, who they love dearly, just left, right? And, you know, to deal with that is not easy. My team at UMBC, having to look at them the other day and tell them, hey, guys, I, I, I'm leaving. It's a shock. All right, to them because it, you know every year I've kind of stayed, you know, and and they just expect me to stay at that point, and um, they don't really know the inner workings of it. And so, you know, to your point, it is a complex thing, you know, at times. And search firms can hide things, and you know, all I can tell you is that John did a, a magnificent job, all right, with this. I'm not saying that because he hired me. He just was he he just was was very responsive. He was very open. He was very honest about you know, the opportunity here, and he certainly guaranteed nothing. When he called me that morning and offered me the job, there was no question that I was taking it. Lucy and I had had conversations about it and made sure that she was good and our family was good and that we felt like this was the next step, all right, the, the right step, all right, for us. And what I would tell you is, um, you know, I had a coaching friend tell me years ago, um, you know, when I was a younger coach, you know, bloom where you're planted. And we've been planted here, all right, in Logan, Utah, Utah State. We're Aggies, all right? There's no thought about oh, what's next or anything like that. No, 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 no. It's we're here, all right? This is our spot, all right? We're going to build it here and try to make this the best, all right, it can be. And, uh, you know, I'm blessed to be here. Uh, Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal. Can you talk a little bit, you've talked about meeting with the team. How important is it to recruit, make sure these guys stay here, and then going forward with a coaching staff, yeah. how, how soon would you like to have a coaching staff in place? Yeah, I mean, both of those are the lifeblood of your program. All right, one coach does not, you know, uh, guarantee championships just by me standing here in front of this, you know, this audience press conference, all right? Hiring the right staff that fits Utah State, all right, is, is of the utmost importance. That, that's my responsibility. I have to get the best staff for Utah State. These guys are the most important thing that we have, all right, right here. These guys right here. I've got to make sure that, 
They love this place, all right? They love this place. I've got to make sure that they stay here, that I earn their trust, all right? And Utah State, just like any school, is not for everybody. There's no perfect fit, all right? And, and every school has its, you know, upsides and then, oh, maybe it's, this is not quite as good or whatever. Um, we're in a different part of, of our game right now. All right? It's a unique times, you know, in college basketball with transfer rules and all that kind of stuff going on. It's very unique times. And I think Utah State is uniquely positioned, all right, uh, to um, do really well because of that, um, because of those rules that are getting ready to be, be put into place. But, you know, without a doubt, these guys sitting in front of me right here are the most important guys. We've got to make sure that we keep them here. All right? We want them to stay, and, and that's my job. If, if it comes a point where they say, hey, you know, I want to look elsewhere and go, that's, that's going to be on them. And it's not going to be because I don't want them here. Sure. Thank you. When do we expect to hear when you start announcing your staff? Yeah, we'll, we'll get moving on it as quickly as we can. Um, you know, I think that's, that's obviously the most important thing to get going with in addition to, you know, getting with our players. Um, you know, obviously UMBC has is, is got to, to do – I've got a staff there at UMBC, and we've got to let that kind of play out a little bit. And, uh, you know, I think they'll move pretty quickly, you know, like John did. I think that's hopefully their goal, you know, there. Uh, but, again, I don't control that. Um, but we're already moving on it, you know, to answer your question. Good. And just real quick, Coach, do you have any thoughts about recruiting right now towards this next year for the Aggies? Yeah, I mean, obviously we're losing, you know, a, a, a lottery pick, you know, and, and uh, that young man, I mean, he's, he's obviously a great player. Um, we've got two other guys that are not going to be back as well. And, and uh, you know, we've got we've to dig in and, and figure out. I think the biggest thing for me is getting in the gym with these guys. I think that's one of my strengths, you know, and, and what I've been able to do at other places. Um, when we first went to the Lenore Ryan, Got in the gym with those guys, figured out where we could need some assistance, you know, or what would match with the current roster. Signed a kid that ended up being a, an All-American in, in Division Two. UMBC, the little guard, you know, that, you know, was so fun to watch, K.J. Mara. Uh, he was a guy that we signed, you know, that first year. And we had a lot of guards back, and they kind of looked sideways at me, you know, initially. Like, we're going to sign the five-whatever – you know, 145 pound guy. And, uh, and then they saw him play and they knew that he was all about passing and he was going to get their, them shots and was going to make sure that they were taken care of. And, and they were like, oh, okay, I'm glad you, I'm glad you, it wouldn't have happened if you didn't bring him in. And so it's going to be no different here. We've got to find, you know, traits, basketball traits that can accentuate what these guys already provide. And so that's got to be, that's going to, that's going to take time. But well, we need talent. I mean, we def we've lost in the last two years, all right, two NBA guys, right? Which, by the way, I got a great text. You know, Sam asked for my number, all right, from John, and he texts me, and what a great guy. You know, he, he, he loves this place and is excited. Whatever you need me to do, Coach, I'm here to help you. And uh, that's really refreshing. Coach, Ajay Salveson, can you talk about the endorsement you got? I hit social media last night, but from Quinn Snyder head coach of the Utah Jazz and how much that meant to you and just your relationship with him and the Jazz? Yeah, no question. I mean, Quinn's certainly a, a, an amazing coach, a mentor of mine. Um, you know, he, uh, he's done amazing things at, at Utah. Uh, obviously, he coached in college, played at Duke. I mean, tremendous, you know, pedigree there. Uh, we met years ago. I met, through, met him through my brother. Um, you know, he was coaching at, at Duke as an assistant when my father, all right, was uh, the head coach at Wake. And you know, he and Lane, Lane was kind of just getting into college coaching at that time, and they became really good friends. Um, and, you know, I can remember conversations, you know, Quinn would have with Lane because he would do scouts against dad and all that. And Quinn would tell Lane, man, your dad's doing stuff that I, like, I'm not seeing anywhere else right now. I'm watching it and going, holy cow, 
This is, this is good. And so they, they struck a friendship up. Quinn ends up going to Missouri. Lane goes with them. They work together for a number of years. And, and, uh, and so I've known him for over 20 years. But it was through my brother uh, initially. And Lane, you know, now is the scout, scout for the Jazz. But it's going to be neat, you know, being here, having access to that and being so close. You know, they actually, uh, you know, one of my former players, Jairus Lyles, actually played for the G League for a year. And so I came out here and spent time with Jairus and, and uh, went and watched their, their preseason workouts, you know, their, their camp. And uh, Quinn was nice enough to let me, you know, spend time with them and talk ball. And, and uh, you know, I got, a, I got a ton of respect, you know. And he sent John a text saying, ask Ryan about five. You know, he said he, he runs that play better than we do. I stole a play from him, a side out of bounds play, you know, that, that he runs all the time. So pretty funny. Coach, welcome. We're happy to have you. Thank you. Uh, have you seen videos on YouTube of the Spectrum in its oh, yeah. glory days? Oh, and yeah. what are you going to do and the players and the whole program to – to keep it there, obviously this last year we had the disadvantage of COVID, but uh, what are we going to do to to fill it up and make it Spectrum Magic? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually we were uh, we were I was showing my my two boys one night and Lucia just pulled it up on YouTube. It's easy to get to, right? You know, the the, the herd chants and and just kind of the the whole production that happens, you know, every game. And I was fortunate enough to meet, you know, over there the head of future head of the herd right over there, um, you know, and we talked a lot about what can I do to help, all right? I want to make sure that it doesn't just stay where it's at. How do we grow it? And obviously, that's a responsibility of, of mine, certainly my staff. I'll have folks on my staff that will be engaged, you know, with the students. That's, that's where your, your advantage, you know, certainly begins. Your home court advantage begins, all right? You have to have the students in there. And Again, I'll say, it, I'll say it one more time. It's not like that everywhere. Um, but we've got to get out in the community. We've got to get out with the student body and continue to, to grow what we already have and make sure that it's not just maintaining. Let's, let's keep trying to get, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. And so we want to make sure we're trying to improve that. And it's all about getting out in front of them and, and, and making sure that they're, you know, they're ready to roll. Seems like we're good. We all good. One last time. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming today. Go Aggies.